They decided to fight the power and became legends in the process. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're taking a look at the history of Public Enemy. Hip-hop group Public Enemy formed in Long Island, New York in 1982. MC Carlton Douglas Reidenhauer, otherwise known as Chuck D, was performing with DJs Hank and Keith Shockley under the name Spectrum City when they bonded over musical and political interests. They added William Jonathan Drayton Jr., or Flavor Flav, to their crew and independently released the record Public Enemy No. 1 in the mid-1980s. After catching the attention of future super producer Rick Rubin, Chuck signed with Def Jam Records in 1986. With him, he took hype man Flavor Flav, Norman Rogers or DJ Terminator X, as well as members of Spectrum City like Professor Griff, and the S1W security dance troupe. Public Enemy was ready to be heard. Everybody, make some noise! After opening for the Beastie Boys, Public Enemy released their critically acclaimed debut in 1987. Yo, Bum Rush the Show became one of hip-hop's most influential albums. Thanks to the creativity and rapping techniques found on their next few releases, Public Enemy helped spark the golden age of rap. Their 1988 sophomore album, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back, proved even more successful than their debut and won fans across other genres. Hit singles like Don't Believe the Hype, Don't Believe the Hype, Don't, don't, don't Believe the Hype, <laughs> and Black Steel in the Hour of Chaos made this socio-politically charged effort one of history's best rap records. Unfortunately, things hit a snag when certain lyrics were called into question and some members made controversial offstage remarks. In fact, Professor Griff was dismissed after making apparently anti-Semitic comments. 1990's Fear of a Black Planet addressed social issues like race relations as well as the organization and empowerment of African Americans and sold one million copies in its first week. Produced by the band's in-house team The Bomb Squad, it featured the famous track Fight the Power and was hailed as one of hip-hop's most significant records. A different version of this single had previously been released on the film's soundtrack for Do the Right Thing. The entire well-received album was later preserved by the National Recording Registry. In 1991, the group dropped the phenomenally successful Apocalypse 91, The Enemy Strikes Black. After peaking at number four on Billboard, that record cemented Public Enemy's status as social commentators with songs like By the Time I Get to Arizona and Can't Trust It. Can't trust it. The band then came out with Music in Our Message in 1994. Despite a top 20 debut, it quickly fell off the charts and group members pursued other projects. However, 1998's top 30 record, He Got Game, marked their comeback it might feel good, it might sound a and served as the soundtrack to a film of the same name. For their next effort, Public Enemy switched to indie label Atomic Pop Records. They became one of the first bands to embrace the internet as a distribution tool when they allowed the label to digitally release tracks from 1999's There's a Poison Going On before the album's physical release. In the late 90s, Professor Griff rejoined the band and DJ Lord replaced DJ Terminator X. During the new millennium, Public Enemy continued releasing critically applauded albums, but was unable to recapture the commercial success of their earliest work. They scheduled the release of their 13th studio album, Most of Our Heroes Don't Appear on a Stamp, for 2012. Outside the band, members kept busy. Chuck D became an author, activist, public speaker and producer, Flavor Flav starred on reality TV, and Professor Griff lectured about the music industry. We have to understand that particular dynamic. With their insanely complicated sample-laden beats and their political opinions, Afrocentric focus and awareness-raising lyrics, Public Enemy dared to do what hadn't been done before. They proved there was more to their art form than superficiality. They used rap as a tool to convey messages of power and to show the world they would not sit idly by. Artists like Queen Latifah and A Tribe Called Quest took cues from the band and also made this a main focus in their music and this confirmed the group's enduring impact on hip-hop. 
This is why they will always be considered public enemy number one. My soul to save my brothers and sisters. Get out.